So um, one of the many helpful things that I have learned since moving to the Abbey is the importance of laughter. Venerable Children models this in every teaching, and I'm very grateful because it's very helpful. And I must say that I, <laughs> that I didn't have a funny bone until I came here. <laughs> So I want to talk about laughter, and specifically laughing at myself. And I have a strong conviction uh, in the medicinal properties and healing properties of laughing at myself. And I want to share with you some of those beneficial effects, just in case I can convince you to adopt this profound spiritual practice. And the laughter that I am talking about is not the malevolent laughter, is not the laughter that is disrespectful or abusive or angry, or angry, because we can laugh when we are angry too, and we can mock ourselves in very destructive ways. But that's not the kind of laughter that I am referring to. Rather, I'm talking about the merry, celebratory laughter that rejoices in recognizing that what I thought was a big deal actually is not. The laughter I want to cultivate is the laughter born from letting go of having a very rigid notion of, of myself and what I do and how I do it. So what are the benefits of this kind of benevolent laughter? First of all, it celebrates my foibles, huh? which helps me reduce fear of making mistakes. And why go through life being afraid of making mistakes if it's something totally unavoidable, right? It's not like I can be perfect all the time, so I might as well celebrate my imperfection. And why wait until somebody points out my faults when I can just laugh about them openly and share them with everyone, right? And it's a great remedy for arrogance. How can I be puffed up about myself, about something that is so laughable? And how can I take myself so seriously when I think and do things that are so funny. Laughter helps me connect with others. It's a good thing to share with others because it invites them to share in my experience, to be relaxed and comforted in the thought that, hey, in this way we are similar. In this way we share a common experience. When they know that I don't take myself so seriously, then people can relax. They can be um, unguarded, right? And they can also know that if I don't take myself seriously, then I also don't take themselves so don't take them so seriously. And so we can hold each other lightly. Um, so everybody wins when we hold each other lightly with benevolence. And given that I am a very anxious person, laughter redu reduces my anxiety. When I laugh at myself, then my anxiety melts away, and it reminds me that there is nothing to be afraid of. When, when I can laugh at something that I have done or said or thought, it means that there is no longer a sting associated with it. The negative energy related to feeling shame or guilt or embarrassment or anger has dissipated. Not by itself, but rather because I have done my homework on the cushion. Therefore, laughter means that I have come to terms with whatever it was that was bothering me and I have moved beyond it. So I picture laughter as icing on the cake. 
it adds more good flavor to something that's already sweet. Making merry about my own afflictions and difficult situations I encounter is a reminder that I have a choice in terms of how I interpret and react to those situations. I can choose to make myself and others miserable, or I can choose to make myself and others laugh. I choose the latter. I want to emphasize that this is not spiritual bypassing. I do have to bring my difficult situations and afflictions to the cushion and work with them both analytically and emotionally. If that step is not done, then I cannot laugh at it because I'm still hooked into the situation and I have not resolved it in my mind. So from my point of view and experience, in order to mm, allow myself to um, feel genuine uh, laughter and healing laughter, it can, that can only happen after the cushion work has been successful and has been done. Many times, um, laughter helps ease a tense exchange with another person. So I use this method too when I feel that I'm on the verge of saying or doing something uh, that is afflictive. I go into laughter mode on the fly and that cuts right through the difficult interaction or the tension of the moment. The trick is to find a funny angle to whatever is going on at that moment and making use of it to diffuse the situation. And though this is really not about trying to be a clown, it's about skillfully using the universal language of laughter to connect, to heal, to interact, in a positive way. So I'm hoping to someday divest from my hidden stash of tissue and instead of crying at the drop of a hat, I hope to laugh at the drop of a hat.